During the war in Ukraine, a lot of countries have been blaming India and they've been telling India to move away from Russia. US called India shaky and they've been questioning their allyship between India and US. Now in this video, I want to go over this exchange between the British Foreign Secretary and India's External Affairs Minister. This is a golden response he gives her. Well, I've outlined the UK's approach to sanctions and the fact that we are ending our dependence on Russian oil by the end of this year, but we're also looking uh, to achieve a timetable uh, with the G7. We've got a meeting of the G7 uh, later this week. I think it's very important though that we respect other countries' decisions about uh, the issues that they face. You know, India is a sovereign nation, I'm not going to tell uh, India what to do. Uh, what I've said is, as a member of the UK government that has signed up to the Budapest Memorandum, I feel a strong responsibility on behalf of the United Kingdom to take all the action we can to support the people people of Ukraine, but that is not the same as going around telling other countries what to do. Final uh, question. May, may I just add a word there? Of course. Um, you know, it's interesting uh, because we've seen for some time uh, what looks almost like a campaign on this issue. Now, I was just reading a report today that in the month of March, Europe has bought, I think, 15% more oil and gas uh, from Russia than it did the month before. Uh, if you look at the major uh, buyers of oil and gas from Russia, I think you'd find most of them are in Europe. Uh, we ourselves get the bulk of our uh, energy supplies from the Middle East, uh, about 7.5%, 8% of our oil from the US. Uh, in the past, maybe less than a percent from Russia. When oil prices go up, I think it's natural for countries to go out into the market and look for what are good deals for their people. But I am pretty sure if we wait two or three months and actually look at who are the big buyers of Russian gas and oil, I suspect the list won't be very different from what it used to be. And I suspect we won't be in the top 10 on that list. Now, before I show you her response, let me just comment on this part. And it's 100% true. 40% of the gas that Germany uses comes from Russia. Pretty much all the gas and oil that Hungary uses comes from Russia. Why are you going to India to lecture them? Go to Hungary and lecture them. Go to Germany and lecture them. Don't come to India and tell the Indians that they should do this and that. Because Indians are not even buying that much gas and oil from Russia. The reason why they're doing it more now, because Russia is giving a cheaper price and there's a global inflation crisis. In this situation that the world is in, if India would refuse to buy energy from Russia, that would be disservice to the poor people in their country. So why should India hurt hundreds of millions of their citizens? For what? To abuse you? Of course they're not going to do that. Foreign Secretary. I think, I think there's also a broader point here, which is... I've said, I've said this about Europe, that over a number of years, Europe prioritized cheap gas, cheap goods over looking at our long-term security. And we didn't do enough when Putin invaded Crimea. Uh, we didn't do enough to involve ourselves in the Minsk agreements. And you know, we are now seeing the result of that. And necessarily, dependency on energy or dependency on technology takes time to address. So we have now, or we're now removing Huawei from UK telecoms networks, but that takes time. Uh, we're reducing and eliminating our dependence on Russian oil and gas, and that takes time. And that is also true of other countries. And the, the, the important thing for me is that the G7 set a timetable to end that dependency and send a strong signal in the market. But you know, to say that you know, years of policy that we have just been through, you can suddenly change it overnight. I mean, there have been some pretty remarkable changes. Germany has changed its entire energy and defense policy 
as a result of the invasion of Ukraine. And we need to keep doing that. After she was told the harsh fact and the reality that they are the ones who are funding Russia, they are the ones who are giving them money, all of a sudden she demands that everybody understand their situation. There's nothing we can do. We are trying to change. It takes time. Blah, blah, blah. Now you want understanding. Why don't you give the same understanding to India? Why don't you give the same understanding to every country in the world that you are trying to bully? They're doing the same thing to African countries. They've been demanding that African countries do more. They've been demanding that we say this and we do that and we put sanctions on Russia. No, you are the ones who are giving Russia all the money. If you are serious about your actions, stop buying their oil and gas. Stop buying their wheat. Stop buying their iron and everything that they produce. But you won't do that. This is all a political theater that these people are playing. They just want to tell their citizens that we are doing something so they go around blaming other countries. They want to shift the blame to India. They want to shift the blame to Africa and Arab countries. But the reality is that they are the ones to blame. For two reasons. One, because you are funding the Russians. And the second, because you are the ones who caused this. You are the ones. The NATO is the one who is responsible for this. As a NATO member, go to NATO meetings and tell them, let's put a line in the sand and let's promise Russia that Ukraine won't be part of NATO. Problem solved. But you don't want to do that. You don't want to stop buying from them. So what do you want us to do? What do you want India to do? This is your mess. This is a European crisis. Deal with it. Solve the situation instead of going here and there to complain because people don't work for you. But these people, they live in the past. They think that they are still colonizing India. They think that they can still push India around. They think that they can tell Indians what to do. The world doesn't work like that anymore. You should learn diplomacy. You should learn how to talk to people with respect, with honor and with dignity. Now, anyways, I hope you liked this video. And if you did, please remember to subscribe, like, share and comment.